In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to use survey data when working on a tripod shot. I've been asked about this a while back, and it took about 10 years to make this tutorial because my couch and TV love me more than my desk and PC. Tripod shots can be a nuisance when trying to line up to a set and synthize because in tripod mode, the trackers are set to far mode which contain no depth information. These are for your camera's rotations only and cannot be told where to sit in space. These shots should be solved using automatic solving rather than tripod so we can utilize constraints. What I'm about to show is also recommended by the man himself in the Synthize user manual on exactly this topic. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. So here are the trackers I'm working with. Not very many, but it'll get the job done. Over in Blender, I did some photo modeling so I can have some survey data to work with for the shot. Now, I gotta take this geometry into Synthize so we can work with it. I've exported what I needed out of Blender, so let's go ahead and import our mesh. You could line up your mesh by pinning or placing your trackers onto the mesh itself, but I'm going to go ahead and copy my data from Blender. The reason I want to get my position data from Synthize is because since I have my survey solve here, I have my geometry, which is incomplete, and all of my 3D points. So I can go ahead and find any corresponding trackers to my shot and just copy the position data over. So here I have Blender and Synthize lined up side by side. This applies to Maya, Houdini, Nuke, whatever, any software where you have any kind of survey data, you can simply copy it over. You're also going to want to make sure that your world axis is matching between your software. Blender works Z up. So I'm going to want to come to edit, scene settings, and make sure that this is set to whatever you need. Blender, Z up. Usually I'm working Y up with any other software. Something I should probably disclose real quick, in case anybody tries to do this with Blender and Synthize, Blender likes to play funny with other software. It scales things in a funny way. So Synthize, for this model to be at a scale that I like for this, I think I scaled it up by 10, and then I exported this. Uh, the reason being is that if I tried to take any of this data into Synthize, these seed points would appear really far out. So there was some scale thing going on and I'm too lazy to explain that side of it because I'm not good at it. So, you know, play around. So now let's start copying some data over to the trackers. So let's look for this tracker first. If I come over here and, oh, I don't have my camera view. Uh, zero on my keypad. And zoom in. Here's a locator we want to work with. In Blender, let me just hit control space so I don't need all that noise. Just, I don't know. I like it. I do want to take a second to talk about something. Make sure that if your locators are under some kind of group or top node, that that group is not moved. So all my locators are under this camera two trackers empty. So right now the trackers, they all have a world space coordinate. Well, not really. They're under another object. So these are all object space. So this top node here, if it happens to be moved, you could see all my locators moving in the viewport. If I were to select these locators, their data is the same as it was before it was moved. So look at this, negative four ending with six, or one of these, let's see. Undo, select it, and it's all the same values. So keep in mind that if there are too many crazy hierarchical structures here, you might be copying the wrong data. If you want to be completely safe, what you want to do is create a new empty or locator, turn snapping on to vertex, and just grab this and snap it to any locators you want because this way you will always have a world space coordinate that will be accurate. With that dire warning out of the way, let's go ahead and copy some data now, finally. So first, I'm gonna select my tracker, and under the tracker tab, you see we have seed and lock. This is where we're gonna enter our coordinates. So I'm gonna select my empty over here, and I'm gonna copy this data, minus that little meter thing, because Synthize will not read that. Just go ahead and copy the rest, and then turn on lock point. And now you can see we have a little seed point here, a little blue indicator telling us that this tracker has a coordinate applied to it. Now let's find another point. I'm gonna clean up my viewport here in Blender, control space, and then if you hit N, you can get your coordinates on the side over here. How about this one? I'm gonna navigate over to that point over here, and same as before, we're gonna copy this value, paste it into seed and lock. As I activate the locks and synthize, if I hit F4, you can see that we have little yellow points that are appearing in our 3D space. 
showing us that things are working. And again, if I didn't do that weird scale thing that I did before, this wouldn't line up because export options that I'm just too lazy to dive into. So you might have that to worry about. Let's look for another point. I'm liking this back window over here. Select my tracker. There's three points. If you happen to already have an initial solve done with automatic, you can get away with using fewer trackers and constrained to solve. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do it. But because we don't have a solve yet, we're gonna need four constrained points to pull a solution here. So I'm gonna find a fourth point. There's two points that I'm really liking right now. This one and this one. But I like to spread out points as much as I can and I don't like that these three kind of form a straight line. They have a fair amount of depth that this wouldn't be a problem, but I don't know, I just kind of like having a little bit of spread in my points. Once again, let's select our tracker, both in Synthize and Blender. That looks about right. Yes, that is it. And start copying our data. Whoops, I forgot the negative there. So now that we have four points locked in Synthize, let's go ahead and hit this with a solve. Let's full screen this, nice and pretty. Make sure you're under the solver tab, and just for a laugh, let's hit go right now. Perfect. Best solve ever. So what happened? We have constraints, but we don't have constrain turn on. So Synthize is not really obeying the locks, it's trying its best to lock on, but because we're dealing with kind of a nodal and weird stuff, Synthize didn't know what to do with this. So if we turn on Constrain and hit Go, it still doesn't work. Beautiful. So I cancelled out myself, and here's what we're going to do to try and get this to work. Let's first play around with beginning and end frame. When you're dealing with constraints for an initial solve, you want to make sure that your four locked points are visible between your two starting frames. Synthize usually does this automatic, but we've turned it on here. And now, because this is a nodal, these frames are usually to tell your camera from this point in space and this point in space, figure out the depth and all the trackers. But this shot is a nodal, there is no depth. So we're kind of just putting them wherever and kind of tricking Synthize here. So I'm gonna hit solve and see what happens. So it didn't work, great. Let's go ahead and mess with the directions here. And look at that, left worked right away. Not because any of these was supposed to work, these are the directions that your camera is traveling between your two starting frames. So right now, Synthize thinks that my camera is traveling left between point A and B. It's not, we just tricked it. But hey, you can look at that, it worked. If you have problems with your shot, mess around with the beginning and end frame, but make sure your four trackers are visible between the two frames, and then mess around with these. I'm gonna hit the pipe key under backspace so I can get no, so I can get a wireframe mode and give this a watch. Looks pretty cool, but the solve dies right here. Why is that? Because we're treating this as a nodal, Synthize usually likes to kill trackers if it knows that it can't find a decent result for. So some of these trackers died because they don't have any kind of depth that they were happy with. So how do we fix that? Well, we can constrain some points further along in our shot, and then all this stuff will kind of fill in the gaps. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this point. So we're back to some split view action. I'm gonna select my tracker, make sure I'm under the tracker tab, and find the point in Blender. Here we are. So with this point selected, I'm gonna start copying. So now that I have this point locked, let's see what happens if I hit it with a solve. And you know what? We might as well be switching over to refine. Refine actually probably would have acted, activated these points, even without this locked point. But eh, whatever, it's kind of nice to keep stitching up data as you have it available. So go. Oh, that didn't work. All right, quick little bit of troubleshooting here. What is happening? So I might have found the culprit here. My tracker at the top, if I select it, it is set to lock, but if I hit F4, we should be able to see its lock point somewhere in this area, but it is non-existent. So let me see what I copied out of Blender that might have screwed this up. So if I select this tracker and make sure it's selected in Synthize, and what is this, negative 5.4 would do? This is wrong. What 
did I copy before? <laughs> okay, anyway, that's embarrassing. Let's go ahead and copy this data over. At least now you could see what happens when you copy the wrong data. I totally had this planned. Nothing is an accident in these tutorials, I swear. Okay. So now we could see the point is actually up at the top. Let's hit solve and see what happens. Go. Oh no, it doesn't work. All right, what's happening? Let's full screen this. Give it, give it a quick watch. See what's happening. Yeah, that is absolutely bananas. All right, so how do we unbanana this? Let's see. First off, let's go ahead and restart with automatic. Our solve here is garbage. Our ref so if you have garbage, you want to get out of refine and get a better initial solve because refine likes to work off of your previous result. So I'm going to get out of refine, go switch to automatic, hit go. And now we have our proper initial solution back. Perfect. Now let's switch back into refine so that we can kind of uh, work on stitching this together. So now that we know that this piece at the top is better, let's try what I mentioned earlier. Let's take one of these points and we'll drop it on a mesh. Track, drop on the mesh and go. Oh, I see points up top. This might be it. Okay, so we got a solve already. Nice. <laughs> um, awesome. I don't have to cry anymore. Oh, there's only so many tears a guy can lose before he gets dehydrated. Thing I got tea here. So sorry I made you listen to that. I'm leaving that in the edit. Now, uh, how else can I exert my tyrannical rule on this plate? Okay, so here's the deal. Now I'm going to consider finalizing my camera, but depending on your shot, you may want to stitch some more points as your shot travels along. I am kind of happy with what I have right now, so I'm gonna convert this into a true locked off shot because right now we're solving is free move and we got to get rid of the animation. If I look at my camera over here, look at this ugly, ugly stuff. <laughs> Not how it was shot. So I'm going to pick a frame where I'm really comfortable with the alignment of the camera. That would be this maybe around here. I kind of like because this is where I did my points and I'm happy with how the things are sitting. Maybe not that, but if I wanted to, you could take and could do a little constraint there. I'm not gonna. So for this, I'm gonna zero out my animation. I'm gonna hit F7 on my keyboard, get this window, come over to cameras, objects, expand everything, and take a look at our solved path. I'm gonna double click the hands to expand and turn off the little color button over here. And let's delete everything except for the frame that we've chosen. Whoops, come at the bottom here, highlight it all. There we are. So now our camera doesn't move. It just rotates, but you can see the errors are running wild on our shot. If you don't have tracker radars on, right click, view. <laughs> Where the hell is it? Why am I passing over it a thousand times? Huh? Oh my God. Show tracker radar. Use this all the time. So since things are going wild because we zeroed out the path, as it should be, we gotta resolve the rotation. So come over to axis locks on your first frame, turn on position, hit get. So now we have our one position in our graph editor loaded in right here. And hit solve, make sure constraint is still on. And our rotations are corrected. Now we have a nodal shot where we were able to use survey data. So some may realize that I did something very naughty here. I got so worked up with the, you know, talking and editing and trying to instruct that I forgot to turn on calc distortion. So for my shot, I can turn it on, solve here and get something kind of, but not really. So I would have to clear out my translations or my, my path lock, solve, and you can see things adjusted a bit. Look at lens and there, I got something a little bit better. By the way, this makes sense from, uh, for what I'm shooting without my lens. Um, it is, it does feel like a weird distortion on a shot with little data, but nodals are usually better for giving distortion data and for the focal length I used and what I'm aware of that my lens outputs, 
this makes sense. So now that I have that, let me really fast delete the animation again and hit solve. Here's my final result. Right click, occluded wireframe, right click, lit wireframes off, hit play.